This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. This is Rick Renner, and today I'm still deep, deep, deep in Russia. Oh, how I love the country of Russia, where God called our family more than three decades ago. But look at this amazing house behind me, the lattice work, all the trimmings. It's so whimsical and colorful. And actually, as you drive through all the villages of Russia, you find places like this everywhere. Well, let me tell you how this began. In the ancient days, the nobility lived in big palaces which were made of stone and masonry, and they decorated all their windows with lavish decorations in stone. And when the poorer people saw that, they said, ah, we wish we could have window decorations like that, but they couldn't afford decorations made out of stone, and their houses were made out of wood. So they began to develop patterns to decorate their windows and all the trimmings of the roof and they nearly began to compete with each other in the villages to see who could come up with the most whimsical decorations. And really, as you drive through the villages of Russia, you see these everywhere, and they're just magnificent. Another reason they did this was because they realized that, hey, if we can really decorate the windows, maybe people won't peek through our windows. They'll be so fascinated with the trimmings, that's as far as they will look. And many people forgot to look through the windows because they were so distracted with what was around the windows. And it reminds me of divine revelation. The word revelation means to part the veil so you can see through to the other side. But many times we can't see through the window what God wants to show us because we're so distracted by everything that's going on around us. But if we'll allow the Holy Spirit to do it, He'll part the veil to the spirit realm and show us things we've never seen before so we can comprehend the height, the breadth, the depth of everything that God wants to show us in another realm. And that is what I'm going to show you today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program. My name is Rick Renner, and I've been sitting in this chair waiting for this moment so we can return to Ephesians chapter 1, where we're looking at a prayer for divine revelation. But I want to offer you the entire series, which is based on these programs, and the series is called Windows into divine revelation. It's five parts. And my friends, I think we have seen that God wants to part the veil so you can see through to the other side. God has some things he wants to show you. He wants to give you a window into divine revelation. And this series comes with a study guide that's filled with all the points and the Greek words. Everything in the series is in the study guide so that you can read it while you're seeing it or hearing it. And this week, we're also offering you my daily devotionals called Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number one, or Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number two. It doesn't really matter which one you begin with. Sparkling Gems, number one, has 365 daily devotionals, and so does number two. And these books are designed to open a window for you so you can see into the scripture like you've never seen it before and have divine revelation. My friends, you will simply devour these devotionals. And please don't worry about the size because you just read a little bit every single day. And by the end of the year, you will have walked through so much of the New Testament with me. And this week, just for fun, we decided to throw in a window magnet. And this window is a replica of the windows that we see in little houses scattered all over the Russian countryside. They first put all this lattice work around the windows because they had a problem with people peeking through their windows. And they said, hey, if we surround the windows with a lot of whimsical lattice work, maybe people will forget to look through the window. And when I see these, I always think about the fact that in life, there are so many things that we look at 
which hinder our view of seeing through the window. We need to not just look at what's around us, all the hindrances and all the things in life, but we need to look through the window because God has things he wants to show us. And when you put this on your refrigerator, I want you to remember that God wants to give you a window of divine revelation. And I want you to also remember to pray for us as we reach people in the Russian speaking part of the world. But hey, reach for your Bible. And today we are going to return to Ephesians chapter one. And we're going to begin in verse 17, where the apostle Paul writes, and he says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory, listen to those words, the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, I know we covered that verse yesterday, but we need to cover it again today because it is so important. But notice how he begins at the very first of verse 17. He uses the word that. And when you read this in the Greek text, it is the word henna, which points to an express purpose. He's saying, I'm praying explicitly exactly that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then he calls him the father of Glory, And as I told you yesterday, when you read this in the Greek text, it is the word pater, which is the word for a father, but it has a definite article, which means this is not just any old father, but this is the father. And the word father, the Greek word pater, depicts one who begets or one who imparts, a progenitor who produces and replicates. So the very first thing this tells us is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ wants to impart something. He wants to beget something. He is a progenitor that wants to reproduce something. And this verse says he is the father of glory. And the word glory is a form of the Greek word doxos, which really depicts the radiance, the splendor, or the glory of God, but also depicts the weightiness of God's presence that is filled with everything good. And according to this verse, he is the father of glory. He produces glory. He replicates glory. And that is why Paul continues to say that he may give unto you. You see, God wants to replicate a glorious experience in your life. In fact, this verse says that he may give unto you, and the Greek is so direct, that he will give directly to you. And the word give is a form of the Greek word didomi, which means to give, to bestow as a gift. It also means to supply or to fully furnish, which means God really wants to furnish for you. He wants to supply for you an encounter with the glory of God. And when you have an encounter with the glory of God, it results in you having a spirit of wisdom and revelation. The word wisdom that is used in this verse is a form of the Greek word Sophia. Let me cover it for you one more time. This word Sophia in the New Testament usually depicts wisdom not naturally attained. You could even translate it as special insight. It was the very word which was used to portray highly educated people like scientists, philosophers, doctors, teachers, and others who were considered to be the super intelligentsia of society. It depicts those who are brilliant, intellectually sharp, or especially enlightened. It was a class of individuals considered to be intellectually impressive that were cut above the rest of society. And here the Apostle Paul, who knows the usage of this word, tells us that when a spirit of wisdom begins to operate in us, it elevates us above the rest of society, which means one encounter with the glory of God will make you a cut above everybody else. But then Paul adds a spirit of wisdom and Revelation. Even the word and in this verse is very important. It is the Greek word chi. A better translation would be a spirit of wisdom, even revelation, which means it is a clarifying statement so that we really understand we're not talking about wisdom naturally attained. We're talking about even revelation. And the word revelation in this verse is the word apocalypsis, which is a compound of two words, the preposition apo, which means away, and the word kalupto, which means to veil something or to hide something so that you cannot see it. When you put the two words together, it forms the word apocalypsis, and the word apocalypsis means to remove a veil, 
Something that was hidden suddenly becomes clear and visible to the mind or to the eye. It is a sudden revealing. It is an unveiling. It means to uncover because the veil has been removed. What is behind the veil is no longer concealed or hidden from view. It is a divine revelation. It is the ability to see and understand what one could never know, see, and understand by him. Self. And I've given you the illustration that when I was a boy, in our living room, we had a big picture window. Well, if the curtains were closed, you couldn't see what was on the other side. Well, what was on the other side was there all along. We just couldn't see it because the curtains were hindering our view. But when my mother would begin to pull the string on the curtain and pull the curtains apart, suddenly we got a peek through to the other side. And the wider she pulled the curtains, the broader our view became until finally when the curtains were completely full, pulled apart, we could see the picture on the other side. And many times, this is the way divine revelation begins to operate in our life. We see a little slither of truth, and then we see more, and then we see more, and then we see more. But my friends, it is the Holy Spirit who controls the string. We cannot pull these curtains apart by ourselves. It is a spirit of wisdom, even revelation. And Paul particularly says that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. But notice in the very first of verse 18, he says that the eyes and in plural in Greek, it is plural, which means God wants you to see this fully with both eyes, the eyes of your understanding. Well, interesting that the word understanding is the Greek word cardias. It's where we get the word for cardiac. It's the word for the heart. Well, what does the heart do? The heart pumps blood. In fact, the heart is so effective at pumping blood, there's not a part of your body that does not have blood in it because the heart is pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping. And now Paul prays that the core of our being would be enlightened, that our heart would be enlightened. And the word enlightened is a form of the Greek word photizo, which means to be lightened up or to be illuminated. But it describes a brilliant flash of light that leaves a definite and lasting impression. Paul is praying that we would have such a spirit of wisdom and revelation at the very core of our being that our heart would be filled with light. And just like the natural heart pumps blood, he's praying that our spiritual core, our spiritual heart would begin to pump revelation in our life, revelation after revelation after revelation until we are filled with divine enlightenment. He says that you may know, and guess what? The word that in Greek is the word ice. The word ice means into. And here it carries the idea of an experience that is progressive. It is leading you forward toward something, toward what? That you may know. The word know is the Greek word oida. And the word oida always means to comprehend, to perceive, to see, or to understand. Then he adds, what is the hope of his calling. What is in Greek means exactly what is, precisely what is, which means God wants to give you a revelation so precise you see exactly what is the hope of his calling. And here it's depicting the calling which the Father gave to Christ. And notice it's called the hope of his calling. Well, the word hope in Greek is the word elpis, but here it has a definite article, and this is very important because this is not just any old hope. This is the hope. It is the hope, and it's not a hope-so kind of hope, but this depicts an anticipation, an expectation that the thing hoped for will certainly come to pass, and it pictures Christ's firm assurance that his calling is going to be fulfilled and notice the word calling, the hope of his calling. The Greek says the calling of him. It means his calling. It's from the Greek word kleseos, which is a form of the Greek word kletos. Now, this is very important. Listen to this. The word kletos conveys the idea of those who have been called or invited to an event that was normally closed to the public. Thus, it's an event that one could only participate in by VIP invitation and was used to describe a special invitation extended by a king who asked people to attend 
a royal feast, and again, these were normally closed to the public. So a person couldn't attend without being invited. And receiving such an invitation was considered to be a privilege and an honor to be treasured and prized. And here it pictures the magnificent calling that the Father gave to Christ. God has given the highest calling to Christ and Christ fully anticipates he is going to fulfill his calling. And then Paul goes on to say, and what is the greatness of his glory of his inheritance in the saints? What is, in Greek is the word tis, it means exactly precisely what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance. Now we have this in the saints. Well, first of all, we come to the word riches, which is the Greek word plutos. The word plutos describes immense wealth, riches beyond imagination. It describes many different kinds of riches. It pictures one who possesses wealth so immense that it is immeasurable. It is abundant riches or measureless resources. But the verse goes on to say, and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance. And here it pictures the glorious inheritance that the Father has given to the Son. And then Paul adds in the saints. And in Greek, the word in is the little Greek word in. It describes where these glorious riches are located. It is in the church. My friends, we need a revelation of what is the church we contain the riches of the glory of his inheritance. And then he says in verse 19, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Notice he begins again by saying, and what is? Notice Paul says this over and over. And what is? And what is? And what is? And every time it means to know precisely something, to know something down to the most minute detail and exactly what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe, which means God wants to give you a revelation about his power. And the word greatness in this verse really describes something that is great, something that is immense, something that is limitless, or something that is vast. The word exceeding is a form of the Greek word hooper balo, a compound of two words, the preposition hooper and the word balo. The preposition hooper depicts that which is above and beyond what is normally expected, and it is something that is surpassing. The word balo means to hurl or to throw, but when you compound the two words together, it forms the word hooper balo, here translated exceeding, which pictures something like an archer who aims his arrow at a target, but he shoots hooper way over the top. And therefore the word depicts something beyond the range of anything normal, something that is unparalleled. That's the kind of power that God has available for you and for me. And then he amplifies it again with this word greatness, which describes something absolutely limitless or vast. Then he adds the word, what is the exceeding greatness of his power? Oh, the word power is a form of the Greek word dunamis. My friends, this is so important. Now, when most people hear the word dunamis, they've heard it before, and they say, well, that describes dynamic power, and that's all right, but that's really not a good definition of the word dunamis. The word dunamis, listen to this, describes explosive superhuman power that comes with enormous energy and produces phenomenal, extraordinary, and unparalleled results. It depicts mighty deeds that are impressive, incomparable, and beyond human ability to perform. It is the very word translated for miraculous powers or miraculous manifestations, and it was the very word used to describe a force of nature like a hurricane or tornado or an earthquake, which means God has explosive super, superhuman power available for us. And when that power operates in us, it turns us into a spiritual force of nature. Now you may not realize this yet, but God wants to give you a revelation of that power. And it goes on to say, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe the word to is the Greek word ice. The word ice means into, which means this power is to us word, literally. It is directed toward us 
The words to us word in Greek means directly to us who believe. Wait a minute. Not who believed, but who believe. And the Greek tense depicts those that have engaged their faith. They are activating their faith. Faith is required to activate the power of God. But then he adds, to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. According to is the Greek word kata. The word kata can be translated according to, but importantly, it carries the sense of something that is dominating or subjugating. And here it pictures us being dominated and subjugated by the working of his mighty power. And when you read the words, the working, it also has a definite article, which means this is not just any working of power. This is the working and the word working is the Greek word energia, which is where we get the word for energy. And here it depicts divine energy, divine energy. Then Paul adds of his mighty power. And in this phrase, mighty power, you have the word kratos and you have the word iskuos. The word kratos is a very specific word which describes demonstrated, eruptive, tangible power. The second word is iskuos. That's where you get the word might. The word iskuos is an old word which described a mighty man or a man that was bound with muscles. You would say this is like Mr. Universe. He's just covered with muscles. He's iskuos. He's a mighty man. And here we find God's mighty, mighty power is available to us. And when that mighty, mighty power begins to flow into us, it's not just mental theoretical power. It is real, tangible power. It is demonstrated power. It is eruptive power. It is power that you can feel, you can taste it, and you can experience it. Now you might say, well, I've never experienced that kind of power. That's why you need to pray this prayer of divine revelation. In this chapter, Paul has told us what we need to pray for. God wants to give us a spirit of wisdom even divine revelation so we could see what we could never see by ourselves, that we may know his mighty power that he extends toward us. So we may know the hope of his calling and the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the church. We need a revelation about the church. Jesus loves the church so much that the fullness of his inheritance is in the church. We need a revelation about how Jesus sees the church. This is a very powerful prayer of revelation, which gives us a window into what God wants us to see and to understand. I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. If you are seeking important answers for your life, then you need a revelation from God about what you should do next. Do you know how to receive that divine revelation? The Holy Spirit has all the answers you need. And in this powerful five-part series, Rick Renner will show you how to open a window to another realm so you can receive the divine revelation and the answers you are seeking for your life. In this remarkable series, you'll learn how to open a window to another realm so you can receive divine revelation about the vital role that praying in tongues plays in your receiving divine revelation, specific prayers that you can pray to help you receive the revelation you need. This five-part series is available in digital or physical format starting at just $10. In addition to this teaching series, you can also get the timeless book Sparkling Gems from the Greek Volumes 1 and 2. In these books, Rick unlocks the brilliant treasures within God's Word and shows you how to live an intimate, uncompromising life with God. In an easy-to-read devotional format, each volume of Sparkling Gems explores more than 1,000 in-depth Greek word studies. These classic devotionals can be yours for just $45 each and is our special gift to you. With every paid order, we are including a beautiful Russian window magnet, each uniquely finished and with masterful detail. Don't miss these exciting offers. The series Windows into Divine Revelation and Sparkling Gems 1 and 2 and receive a beautiful Russian window magnet with every order. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and today I am standing in the foyer of Rick Renner Ministries in Tulsa, Oklahoma and I just wish I could pick you up and bring you here to see all the wonderful ministry that is happening in this facility where we receive thousands and thousands of phone calls 
from people just like you who reach out to us for prayer and for teaching they can trust. Proverbs 10, 21 says, the lips of the righteous feed many. And we know that's our job. Our job is to feed many. And I wanna say thank you to you for everything you've helped us do with your giving. You helped us construct our studio, purchase this building. And now in phase three of our ministry expansion program, we're wanting to pay this facility off so we can liberate all that money to take the teaching of the Bible around the world on additional channels and venues. And by being a part of our giving team, you can really help us make this happen. If you're not already a part of our giving team, please pray about joining us. And together we can join hands and through teaching of the Bible and by ministering to people that reach out to us and by sending teaching products around the world, we can really change people's lives. And it's amazing to me that today it's never been easier to make an impact in somebody else's life right from where you are. So thank you for praying about being a part of our giving team. And the moment you join, I want you to really expect the power of God to show up in your life. Today we have covered so much material that I know you cannot possibly remember at all. And that's why I want you to order the whole series, which is called Windows into Divine Revelation. Today we have seen that God wants to show us some amazing things. But this is a five-part series based on these programs, and it comes with a great study guide. And right now we're also offering you my daily devotionals called Sparkling Gems from the Greek, number one. The subtitle says, 365 Greek Word Studies for every day of the year to sharpen your understanding of God's Word. And if you already have number one, then my friends, you can order number two. I wrote number two for those who'd already gone through number one. And number two says, 365 new gems to equip you and empower you for victory every day of the year. And I want to remind you that this week, in every order, we're dropping in a replica of a Russian window because I'm doing a series called Windows into Divine Revelation. It's a magnet that you can put on your refrigerator. And when you look at it, I want you to remember that God wants to show you something on the other side of the window. And I also want you to remember to pray for the renters as we do our ministry in Russia. And please, if you have a prayer need, reach out to us. We're waiting for the telephone to ring right now or for your email to show up in our inbox. And as soon as we hear from you, we're going to release our faith. And Jesus is going to work a miracle in your life. But I want to pray for you right now. Father, we've been talking about a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And according to Ephesians 1.17, you want to give that to us. I pray today for myself. I pray for my friend that is with me, that you would open our eyes, that you would enlighten our heart, that we could see everything you're wanting to show us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. But remember, Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there's power. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.